Good day. Hi, everyone. Um, this video is, I'm just going to introduce you, one of my favorites is LIM that I use uh, to do um, flow sheet simulation or mass balancing, which is a primary job of a process engineer. And that's really to give an, a guidance to the rest of your project team in terms of the size of the various pieces of equipment, the number of pieces of equipment, and whether the overall flow sheet uh, will work. The... Um, thing that you can see about LIM uh, is it's essentially an Excel add-in and um, that's what it is. It's not, so it's a bit different from other simulations in the sense that it's Excel and that once you've created it, it is fairly transparent for anyone to really want to see. For argument's sake, each unit process has its own sheet and you can see all the calculations that's used. It's that mass, uh, that thing, times the required um, uh, p1 or whatever so and you can actually look you, you know formulas and you go to precedence and you can see where the various values come from okay so it's it really does allow you to see what is going on in your model the other thing is it also allows you to you can literally when you go into limb draw and let's say somebody in your of very theoretical has a bakhat plan that actually stuffs you up and says what about if that stream actually goes there then you have to start redoing your mass balance. But with you, if you did it in limb, you'd literally take that thing, you draw it, and you put it in there. Uh, so uh, testing various scenarios is a lot easier in um, limb than what if you wouldn't do it. And as I said, it's Excel, so it's transparent. The other thing that is important is that uh, what's found with time, at least in my experience, is that you do a process design criteria and you link it to your, uh, your, your uh, mass balance so that any changes in your model you can, uh, or your inputs can be reflected in your mass balance. So there comes a time in any project when you go, do the, lot, uh, you, uh, the project team catches optionitis. A lot of options are being uh, tested. The other beauty of... Um, for argument's sake, is that you've got controllers here where you try and control to a specific value by setting a parameter there. And let me show you what that means. Let's say you need a certain RD coming out here, but you don't know how to change it. You can just change the water addition there. As you can see, the water flows from here. Some of it goes over here and some of it would end up over there. So by changing that parameter to, to see how the outcome is here, you can iterate or target it's basically a goal seek function for you and then you've got also the scenarios you can run nu numerous scenarios overnight or within an hour can have a coffee break and then you can see what things influence your uh, mass balance overall then when you go also onto the insides of your model you can see in here in this case, the problem statement was you've got export coal, you've got ESCOM coal, which is a local producer in South Africa, a power producer, discard, and magnetite. So you've got three species, in actual fact five, because you're also tracking water throughout your flow sheet. So it's a little bit of more tricky here than would normally be the case. Um, and so you've got more options to do. If you were to become clever and you start knowing about EPs and D50s and cut points, etc. In, in a coal, for argument's sake, you can uh, you, you can see here, you've got your thing uh, by size and by the RD of the species. So you've got, basically, you've got a row 50s where the cut point, where you've got a 50% probability of it going to the overflow and 50% the underflow. So that is the one thing I just wanted to show. And then the other thing is that if you were to go and look at the often their underlying function, sorry, I've just gone to the developer VBA uh, in the background, and you can actually literally see where the D50 is calculated. And it's quite easy. You can see here at the top, I have, if you go into the developer function, you can you can go and see that, that um, where these VBA codes come from. So it's, it really is transparent. And then you could even, and I did it for argument's sake here for a mineral sands thing, and you can see there are a lot of... Um, Recycles, and I don't know how you do it with a normal mass balance. If you can do it with limit, it allows you to see it quite flexibly. And what is, let's for argument's sake here, I read a paper that told me how to build a Excel version of a model for a um, spiral. And basically what I did is I built it here, and I basically can control the splits of the spiral based on the model I read in the open literature. So you can even start building your own models in them. You can read an uh, open literature article, build it in your model, and all you need is Excel. So I hope I've shown you the importance and how uh, beautifully it can help you in your daily job as a metallurgist. Thank you very much.